Okay, so at the beginning of the review, just talking quickly through like one, two, three, and then I want to go over number four in more depth. Numbers one, well, number one, this is how you say which angles go together in terms of congruence. And this is called a statement of proportionality. This is how you say which sides go together. The way I think is the easiest way to do this is to come up with this first. And then instead of looking at the figures, I just look at the order of the letters here. Like I would put A, B over J, G because this is the first one, second, first one, second. And then I put B, C over G, H and A, C over J, H. So just sticking with the same order you already have so that the letters match up appropriately. And it's okay if your order is different from mine as long as every place that you have an A that goes with a J or every place you have a B that goes with a G and so on. Now in 2A, the thing to remember here, you're checking to see if these are all the same. There are a couple of different ways to check and see if fractions are all the same. But before that, you've got to be careful that you set it up right. And what I mean by that is, don't forget to compare the smallest side over here with the smallest side over here and the biggest side over here with the biggest side over here. If you don't compare in the right order, then it's never going to be similar. Okay, so once you've got it set up in the right order, there are a couple ways to decide if this fraction is equal to this fraction. One way is to simplify them both, which is what I did here. I simplified every single one of those fractions and I got 7 over 8. Okay. Another way is to cross multiply, but you can only do it with two at a time. Like if I took these two fractions and said 21 times 32, and then I did 24 times 28, I should get the same thing both ways if they're equal. If I don't get the same thing for both cross products, then they're not equal. Another way is to put it in your calculator. Go 21 divided by 24, see what decimal you get. Then go 28 divided by 32, see what decimal you get. 35 divided by 40, see what decimal you get. It should all be the same. Every time you're asked if they are similar, which like here it says determine if the polygons are similar, similar, you're going to want to compare side lengths that way. So here's the similarity ratio, and here's a similarity statement. This is what a similarity statement is, this part right here. This is not because 18 over 24, which equals 3 fourths, is not 36 over 54. I compared this by looking at 18 over 24, simplifying, that gives me 3 over 4. And then I looked at this and I said, okay, 3 goes into 36 12 times. Does, three go in, does 4 go into 54 12 times? And the answer is no. So this is not 3 fourths, but this is 3 fourths, so they're not the same. Okay, here you just have to make sure you compare the same things. Like this is the length of the race car over the width of the race car, length of the model over the width of the model. So as long as you set it up so that like if it's length over width over here, it needs to be length over width over here, and then all this work over here is cross multiplying. Okay, so you can go back and pause. I'm moving on if you want to see that. Getting into number four. Number four, what's hard about number four is it says dilation and then translation. So it's a two-step process. If it was just a one-step process, if I was going from here, these three points, to here, and it was just a dilation, then I could just divide. I could take the new coordinates and put them over the old coordinates and figure out what my scale factor is and know exactly how to describe the dilation. But I can't do anything with the coordinates in terms of division because it's a two-step. I've got multiplication and I've got addition and subtraction or addition or subtraction. I don't know yet. So here's how I would do this one. First I draw them both and figure out which one's the starting one, which one's the finished. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. Um, JKL, it says that J is at negative 4, 6. So here's J. K is at 4, 6. And L is at 4, 4. So here's JKL. Now it's important to understand that it says this is the starting one. Okay, and then the next one is STU. STU is negative 4, 1 is S. T is 0, 1. And U is 0, 0. So STU is down here. Okay, 
So if I have to figure out a dilation first and then a translation that goes from here to here, so this is my starting one and this is my ending one, then first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to multiply this one up here. I'm going to multiply it by something and then I'm going to slide the something over or down, whichever way, down and over. Okay. First thing I have to do though is figure out how much the size has to change because that's the dilation part is changing the size. Well, looking at these side lengths, Joshua excuse me for the interrupt. Come to the okay, this is a two, Joshua Wilson. Come two to the blocks Gold here, lobby. and here this is only one block. So that's one way I could compare them. Across here, this is eight blocks all the way across. So from J to K is eight, and then when I change it, it's only four. So what is happening here is everything is getting half as big. Remember that your scale factor, which is k, this is scale factor, is always the new one over the old one. So if we started here and we ended here, this is my final one, this is the new one. So new over old. I could put the 1 over the 2. Or I could do the 4 over the 8, because 4 over 8 is also 1 over 2. It's also 1 half. So that's new over old. Always remember to do new over old with dilations. Okay. So that's the first thing, is I know that first I have a dilation of one half happening. So that changes this original figure, and then it puts it somewhere else, and then I slide it into place. That's the translation part. So what I really need to do is find out where that somewhere else is, find out where the middle place is. It's like I'm going on a journey, and I have to stop in the middle of the journey. I'm going to take a, take a rest stop. So it starts here, and then I multiply one half. So I can see what happens with this dilation, with these coordinates, after a one-half dilation. So I'm going to take each one of them and multiply times one-half. So one-half times negative four and six gives me negative two and three. One-half times four and six gives me two and three. And one-half times four and four gives me two and two. So this is where it stops after the dilation. After the dilation, I'm at negative 2, 1, 2, 3. Let's call this J prime. And positive 2, 3, this is J, excuse me, K prime. K prime. And positive 2, 2. Okay, so this is where I get when I first make it half as big. So I figured out the dilation part. Okay. So what happened from here to here is a dilation. Here's how we describe my dilation. I took my x and my y, and I did one half of x and one half of y. So now I've got the dilation part down. The next part is I have to figure out how do I get from here to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a point, any point, and look at how it moves. J, to go from J prime here to S, I'm going over 2 to the left and down 2. When I'm moving in terms of X's, if I'm going left, that means I am subtracting. I'm going negative, so I'm getting smaller. So what happens on my translation, the slide part, is the X's decrease by 2. All the, twos, all the X's go 2 to the left. All the points go 2 to the left. And then they go down by 2 on the Y also. So like this one goes 2 left and down 2, or this one goes 2 left and down 2, so it's y minus 2 also. And this is my final answer for what happens in two parts to get me from JKL, this is the original that I just shaded, to STU. Okay.